I hope I'm going to award the thinking Yorkshireman. In my last video, I went over the basics of the British political system. In this video, I'm going much more in depth. If they've not seen my last video, I do recommend it, though it's not essential if you already have a decent understanding of the British political system. In this video, I'll go over the topics of the Privy Council and statutory instruments. I'll go over the full process of passing a bill through Parliament and I'll also touch on devolution at the end. With that out of the way, let's get into it. The last video ended with the Privy Council, so that's where we shall start today. The Privy Council is the official advisory council to the Queen and contains many senior political figures. But when the Privy Council exercises its power, it is usually by cabinet ministers, the cabinet itself being part of the Privy Council. The Privy Council can issue two types of legislation, orders in council and orders of council. Orders of council are made by the Privy Council on its own authority and are used to amend royal charters and things like that. Orders in council have the personal approval from the Crown and themselves fall into two types. Statutory and prerogative. Prerogative orders in council are made under the royal prerogative and are in no way subject to Parliament. This type is considered primary legislation and, in effect, is a royal decree. Examples of this include transfer of ministerial responsibility and emergency legislation during crises. Statutory orders in council are a type of statutory instrument and may but not always be subject to Parliament. A statutory instrument is a power given to ministers under an Act of Parliament, and the Act dictates the level of parliamentary oversight. This could be no oversight whatsoever, simply laying it before Parliament or seeking full parliamentary approval. The civil service is responsible for implementing the laws decided by Parliament and the government. When a minister makes a decision, it is the responsibility of the civil service to ensure it is carried out. Moving to my next point, I shall now detail the full process of passing a law through Parliament. First of all, a bill is drafted and a green paper is written which sets out the government's aims with that legislation. A white paper is then drafted which is a first draft of a bill which shall be laid before Parliament. At first reading, the title of the bill is read before the House. It is then debated at second reading. At second reading there is a vote on whether to continue the process. The next stage is committee stage, where amendments are drafted and voted on. This is followed by report stage, where it is decided whether further amendments are needed. Third reading is the final vote on the bill and decides whether the bill should move to the other house. The same process is repeated in the other house. If the other house chooses to amend it, it will pass back and forth until both houses agree on the text of the bill. The House of Commons may veto a bill from the House of Lords but the House of Lords, since the Parliament Act of 1911, may only delay the legislation for up to a year. 
however they can still block secondary legislation. When both Houses agree on the bill, it shall be passed to the Queen to be signed into law. The Queen still has the right to veto of the law, but this hasn't been done in 300 years. In fact, the last bill to be blocked by Royal Assent was the Scottish Militia Bill in 1708, in the reign of Queen Anne. With the passage of the Scotland Act, the Northern Ireland Act and the Government of Wales Act in 1998, Westminster has delegated some of its powers to these local administrations. In Scotland, the Scottish Parliament in Holyrood can make laws on matters that only affect Scotland, and the Scottish Government have power over local tax, education, health, housing and other such things. The head of the Scottish Government is the First Minister of Scotland, currently Nicola Sturgeon. Wales has a similar structure to that of Scotland, though the Senate Cymru, or Welsh Parliament, formerly known as the Welsh Assembly, only gained legislative authority in 2011. It originally was only granted executive authority. The Welsh Government is headed by the First Minister of Wales, currently Mark Drayford. Northern Ireland has its own devolved administration in the Northern Irish Assembly. Whereas the Scottish and Welsh administrations closely resemble the system in Westminster, the Northern Irish Assembly has quite a different structure due to the region's troubled past. The Northern Ireland Assembly has a First Minister and a Deputy First Minister who share power. One is Unionist, the other is Nationalist. The Northern Irish Executive is split between these factions. This arrangement is designed to keep peace in Northern Ireland. Unfortunately, this arrangement doesn't lead to the most stable government, so in the event of authority in Northern Ireland breaking down, as it did for three years between 2017 and 2020, the government in London governs through orders in council. And with that comes the end of the video. If you want me to go over anything discussed in this video, let me know in the comments. With that out of the way, like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. See you then.